In today's video, how to care for your hibernating ants, a checkup on our colonies, right after the intro. Hello and welcome to another Ants Vienna episode everyone. First things first, before I take you to my basement, if you're one of the 83.6% of people who watch my videos but are not subscribed, why? Since you are watching my videos anyway, how can it hurt you? By subscribing, not only do you support me, but you also make sure you don't miss anything. Next video, I am doing a giveaway. Just saying. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into it. The basement, that is. Because this is where I keep my ants in the winter during the hibernation period. For those of you new to ant keeping, depending on where you live and how temperatures variate during the year, local ants may be hibernating in the time where it is cold and snows outside. Here in Vienna, Austria, for example, it gets quite cold in the winter and therefore our local ant species stay under the earth with their nest entrances closed up. Since food is scarce and ants, like most insects, are cold-blooded, they enter a freeze stage where they don't move much to conserve energy and survive until it gets warm and they can find food again. This process is what we call hibernation period. So, when you keep ants as pets in an ant farm, also called formicarium, ideally you want to recreate the conditions the ant would be exposed to in their natural environment. For me, that means letting my ants rest in the basement from October to March, with an average temperature of 8 degrees Celsius. Now, while you should avoid disturbing them, because they do not need food during hibernation, you have to make absolutely sure they are hydrated, because they can still die, if you let them dry out. So today I will take you with me while I go through my routine that I repeat every couple of weeks with my colonies that are no longer in test tubes and thus need to be watered. I keep them underneath my workbench, here in the basement. Temperatures here vary depending on the weather outside, ranging from 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. We'll check on the colonies one after another and care for them accordingly. We'll be watering them with this 20 ml syringe. And this is the box where I keep these small sized formicaria. Most of them are made by me and if you are the crafty type you may check on our build video section which I'm going to put with a card right now in the corner and try to recreate them for yourself. Let's start with our Lazius Niger colony, since their setup is conveniently placed on top of the others. You may notice that I put this see-through red plastic on top, since many argue that ants cannot see the color red and therefore it reduces the amount of stress that sunlight or any light for a fact would put on them. But let's take it off for now. Here they are, all crumped together in a pack 
and the queen in the middle. Sorry for the bad lightning here. I am filming this with my cell phone and I didn't want to put a studio light in here because it would undoubtedly stress the ants even more. Now as you can see, there are some workers here and there, but most of the punch are in that one room with the queen and all the brood, protecting them with their own bodies from the cold. Now I'll try doing my best, watering them with one hand and filming with the other. There you go, that should be enough for now. I will pause the video here and try to take a few stills for you. Next up, one of our Campanotus Ligniperdus queens in that self-made Udong ant nest. Their size really helps with filming. Like Lazius niger, Campanotus ligniperda also tend to keep brood during the winter in the larvae stage. Let's zoom out a bit so you can see the whole nest here. And you see I have put that pieces of cotton in there because I actually had a couple of SKPs from this colony. Same process again, just pumping the water in slowly so that it can disperse with help of the sponge. Waiting a bit in between. You see, they do take some time to realize that something has changed and by moving their antennas they are apparently sensing the change in humidity within the nest. Let us follow this worker for now. Put that piece of cotton in again and there we go. Next up, another Campanotus ligniperda colony. Unlike the other one, which I caught in 2019, this one I found in 2018, in June. And since she had a few more workers than the other one, I put her in a somewhat bigger Betong ant nest, which I also made by myself of course. A couple of workers died here. This is one of the last setups that I made, so I have had no SKPs and therefore there is no need to cover up the holes here. Let's proceed with watering them. Trying to disperse the water over the whole area. They are also taking their time to react. This colony has only one larvae. The one worker is holding it, if you look close enough. I have also put a little watering tube in there outward, just to make sure they don't dry out, as an extra precaution. Next up is our Formica Fusca colony 
which has well recovered over the last mole outbreak they had in their test tube. This is the reason I put them here. The setup consists of an udong nest paired with another little outworld that I made by just drilling a hole on an acrylic box and covering it up with mesh. Unfortunately, also one dead worker here. You will also notice there is no brood here because Formica species in general, including Serviformica, like Formica fusca, hibernate without brood. So you won't see any eggs, larvae or pupae here during hibernation period. Formica queens actively stop egg laying at the end of summer. Last but not least, we'll take a look at our Serviformica cunicularia colony, which I personally call the masters of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> but unlike other colonies I have, this colony tends to leave their garbage just about everywhere in their setup. Which also took me quite some time and effort to build. Let us zoom on the queen for a while. In this setup, I actually cannot easily distinguish what's mold and what's just dirt. But it doesn't seem to be affecting the ants negatively in any way for now. In fact, every time I am watering this colony, they tend to run away from the water. So they probably like a drier nest during the winter. Okay guys, to wrap everything up. Today we've talked a bit about hibernation and we'll now have a quick look again at the colonies that we've cycled through the duration of this video. Namely Formica fusca, here in the green setup. My first Campanotus lignic perda colony, in the yellow one. The Lesius niger colony we have. Our top setup, Serviformica cunicularia. And the other Campanotus lignic perda colony that I found last year. As always, thank you very much for watching. Give the video a like. If you want to see more videos where I provide you with a bit of background information. And, as I said in the beginning of the video, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon with all notifications so you don't miss my next video where I am going to do the giveaway of the angled Utong ant nest that I have in the works, which is going to be similar to the volcano style ant nest that I used for my Nicobarensis colony, which you can check in my last video. And for the ones of you still listening, I have the question of the day. Which of the colonies I have shown you today is your favorite and why? Depending on the answers I get, the specific colony might get a new setup ahead of the others. I'm already curious about which colony is most popular under you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!